Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. It is beat picks, three picks of the NFL Week 12 as we're here for Thanksgiving weekend games. As I be joined by Pal today. How you doing, Pirlo? Doing great, buddy. Doing great. Looking forward to some football this weekend. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely some good games with the one that starts us off on the weekend is the Las Vegas Raiders against the Atlanta Falcons. That is surprisingly a close spread, probably because the Falcons are at home, I'm assuming, at a minus three, 54 and a half total. Um, Derek Carr has been having a very good season this year. Matt Ryan's also been having a good season. The Falcons just have not done anything to help their quarterback. But I really think the Raiders, because of the combination of the running game featuring Josh Jacobs, of course, and Derek Carr having his top-notch season, as well as um, the ability of, at times, to step up ranked. Um, in, in rushing yards, they give up during the top 15, and so they step up there, but at least somewhat as an average defense where the Falcons is the worst, one of the worst in the league, if not the worst. So I feel like the Raiders are going to be able to win this game because their offense will hand it to the Falcons' to subpar defense. And their defense is going to be able to play better, more like an average defense like the Raiders is compared to the Falcons, which we know is well below average. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like the Raiders here too. Um, the Falcons have been a little better uh, as the season has gone along, but I think the Raiders are just getting better and better uh, every, every game. They're just getting to be a better team. Uh, the last game uh, against was KC, right? Yeah, and they played yeah. such a close game. The only reason they lost is they gave Patrick Mahomes too much time to score. Yeah, there they was, scored too quickly. Yeah, I think KC is the best team in the league right now, and they came pretty darn close to beating them against a Falcons team. I, Carr just has too many weapons for that defense. That defense isn't going to know what to do with um, the. I believe that they have too many weapons. They have a hard time against teams with only one weapon. So uh, I think that I would actually do a reverse spread on that and give the Raiders the, uh, give, get, take, give the Raiders the points. So they're uh, uh, minus three themselves and see what you could get on that. I wouldn't even mind that. And in our th bet 365, they got uh, 52 and a half for the over on. I, I like the over on that as well. Um, I think Atlanta will still get their offense because they do have a good offense. And we saw how um, last week against now KC's got a much stronger offense. But that was really what came down to with the, with the Raiders is they couldn't do anything with that offense. They were, they're very small. Uh, they're quick, but they're not very big. And I, so I, I, think, I think that the Falcons will get their offense and this will probably be over. I wouldn't bank a lot on it, but... Put a unit on it. Yeah, yeah, I would think it's more likely to go over, but I do think the uh, Raiders are able to, of course, win this game. And I think they are likely to win by more than three points against the Falcons. That's just the way I see that happening. They're also 4-1 and one on the road, so that will just continue their good road numbers if they yeah. are able to capitalize on Sunday. Uh, and then the next game we have is the L.A. Chargers and the Buffalo Bills. I don't think this game's very hard to go over. Uh, we got the three and seven Chargers that are mostly watched because of one person, that is Justin Herbert. Um, and then we have the seven and three Bills that are, of course, led by a potential MVP candidate in uh, Josh Allen. So I believe this game, hands down, is going to go to the Buffalo Bills. They are just the far, I mean, they're the far superior team. Now, the, this is going to be, if the Bills' defense doesn't play well, potentially a good offensive game, though, because in total yardage, the Chargers' offense is in the top five and the Bills is in the top 15. So this could be a good offensive game where the Chargers' defense is actually ranked in some notches higher than the Bills, but the Bills are because of their overall talent. They get turnovers when they need them. They're like a very good and oppor combined with opportunist football team, and when you have both of those things going for you, you're going to be hard to beat when we talked about 
teams in the past just being opportunists when you have the very good skill set players with that opportunist mentality that's just hard to beat and that's why one of the re- many reasons why I think the Bills are going to easily handle uh, the Chargers and that's going to be more of an interesting game just because of the QB battle than anything else yeah I mean it, the Bills just kind of dipped a little bit in between they started out well there's a bit of a dip, maybe making adjustments, uh, but now they look like they're rolling pretty darn good. Allen is playing ex- ex- as he was at the beginning of the year. Like they all seem to just kind of go through a bit of a slip mid-season or mid, not mid-season, but in, up until now. And uh, now it looks like they're coming right back again. Where the Chargers, like I said, it's too bad right now that they can't, they don't have a better team for Herbert, but. Hopefully they will in the future, and uh, it's going to have to be in the future because I think the Bills will win and cover here, and I lean to the 52.5 as well as an over, but I don't think I put any money on it. It's pretty high. That's a little high. It has a chance. It depends uh, how the defenses do um, because this is a battle of quarterbacks, which is the biggest reason you're watching this game since – like we both said, we think the Bills will win this game in a pretty good matter and cover that five-point spread. So mm-hmm. we can move on now to probably one of the least interesting games of the day. Uh, but there might still be some good betting plays in it, and that is, unfortunately, uh, the injured uh, Joe Burrow's team, the Cincinnati Bengals, as we wish him well in his recovery, against the New York Giants. This is in Cincinnati. That doesn't matter at all. Because uh, Brandon Allen is going to be starting for the Bengals, unless if they pull a rabbit out of the hat. The Giants have won some of the closest games in all of football, or excuse me, lost some of the closest games in all of football this year, and have been one of the better performed NFC East teams, even with their three and seven record in terms of close games that they've w- lost, and then close games with usually their wins as well. So. With that being said, the Giants have been performing better. I believe they're going to be able to get this win. They have a rushing attack mixed of a couple guys in Goldman. They got Sladen and others. Sterling Shepard, of course, has been back. Uh, I think the Giants are just the tad, not by much, but with Burrow injured, definitely the tad better team here that's going to be able to put them over the hump as they look for Daniel Jones to continue to progress and grow and learn and become the quarterback they hope he can become as he's looked a little bit better in the last two weeks here. So. Yeah, um, I think the better play on this is the under 44. I think it'll, uh, Giants aren't really great I, when it I comes agree. to offense. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the best play here. I think the Giants will likely win, but I'm not so confident they'll cover. The Bengals no. overall can keep can have a defense that can that – can, uh, that can keep a Giants team at least close anyways, considering the Giants offense. So, and not to mention, neither one of them are in it here. You know what I mean? So you're playing two teams playing with hearts that maybe not be fully in it. Well, I do like the Giants as well because I really like their coaching and they have become better throughout the year. They haven't given up and they've played with a lot of pride. So in that way, I kind of like the Giants here for that reason. I, I will. It's 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 going to be interesting to see how much pride the Bengals play with. Yeah. Well, the Giants, um, they would actually at three and seven still be playing for a lot though, because the NFC East is so terrible that the four and seven Washington. Oh yeah. In front of them. That's right. So that's right. They as are long playing as they for win a lot, that so game, yeah. they're tied for first place. So that's also why. I think the Giants will win because they actually are playing for something where the Bengals have no hope in anything. That's right. I completely completely forgot about that. (laughs) Yeah. So they are playing. They are playing with something. So yeah, for sure the Giants. That's why the NFC least. Um, (laughs) But you got the seven and three. Our next game is our seven and three battle between the Colts and Titans. Both seven and three teams. This is probably going to be the closest game on the day. Um, you got a very good uh, Titans overall Titans team against a very solid overall on both sides of the ball uh, Colts team. The Colts are much better on both sides, though, because their defense is ranked top two in the league in total yardage, uh, where the the um, 
Titans is all the way down at 25th, and their defense is not as good as it was last year, where this year their offense, because of Derrick Henry and Tannehill really having a good year, even better than last year, is ranked top 10. So this is going to be an interesting game. I just think full roster, uh, the Colts are a team that have kind of impressed me beyond what I thought of them this year. Expectations where the Titans were a team that exceeded it last year. Tannehill started bouncing back where I thought they would kind of keep that train rolling. Where Tannehill this year is even doing better than I think I would have expected him to do because I consider him a game manager, not a guy that's going to have that 2,300 yards at this point and the 22 4 and 106 rating. Like, I think that's better than I thought too coming in. So you have a team that played up compared to a Titans team that I think is better than the Colts team overall with a quarterback that's playing ahead of expectations. So because of that, I'm going to say I think the Titans are going to win this game because normally 9 out of 10, if you're saying you have a better team in your mind and the quarterback's playing ahead of expectations, you should take that team. So I think the Titans are going to be able to win this game. The only way they will not will be if their defense fails them against Indy and The reason I don't think that's going to be the case is Jonathan Taylor's been good, but they have a very mixed offense. They mix it up, Indianapolis, where I think uh, they're going to be able to stop them enough to be able to win this game where the weapons of A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry, just those two guys, are more superior than a Jonathan Taylor and a Zach Paschal uh, combination due to some injuries on the Colts. So. I think their offense for the Titans is going to be able to get enough points to be able to win this game. But what do you think? Uh, I'm on the fence about this game. I don't even like the total. Uh, if I if you tie me down, I'll take the Titans to cover. I think it'll be close. Very close. I, I, I'm. It's like a coin flip to me to who's going to win, honestly. Uh, the Titans, the problem with the Titans is the exact, the two things that the Titans have and the Colts have that could sway this game. The Colts are very disciplined and the Titans aren't. So that would, that's, that's going to be the, the, that, that could be the thing that changes the, the whole flow of the, the, of the game. I think the Colts could win this because of that reasoning, but I could definitely see the Titans taking over as well. So very difficult game to cap. I would take the Titans to cover maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. uh, It's only a three point cover, so I think they will likely cover if they're able to win. In terms of that over under, it's at 50 and a half. I think with these two teams battling against each other, um, it's likely to probably be a little bit. I think I'm seeing a good battling game between these two uh, opponents. That will likely keep it under a fifty and a half. Yeah, so, I would I would lean under too. For sure. Yeah, that's yeah. the way that I would lean with that. Um, now we have Cleveland and Jacksonville. This is a game we're not going to spend much time on because uh, we're going to move quicker past some. Just put your money on Cleveland. They're going to cover the minus seven spread. That's going to yeah. be under likely under forty nine and a half because I don't think Cleveland's going to score enough themselves to get that over 49 and a half and the Jags are probably not going to add enough points. Uh, so that would just brush past that, uh, that game. Cause we don't want to dwell on games that uh, we don't need to dwell on. Um, we have now our four and seven Panthers versus the four and six Vikings. Uh, this is another uh, game. That's a battle of just two struggling opponents. I do think this game is going to go to the Vikings, though, because the Vikings have been a bit better. And Teddy Bridgewater is injured for the Panthers, so they got Phillip Walker, the inexperienced quarterback, starting. So that's my simplistic reason. I think Kirk Cousins, who's been looking better recently, now brought himself back to 20-11 and 11 rating after having a pretty bad start to the year to now have pretty good stats. He's going to be able to beat an inexperienced quarterback. Their defense is going to play well enough against an inexperienced quarterback and probably have potentially the best game of the season, and their top 10 offense will show up. So, the not the Titans, excuse me, the Vikings will beat the Panthers. And it's not going to be a game, I don't think, because they don't have Teddy Bridgewater. 
I don't know. I, I heard Bridgewater might be back, but yeah, I, w- I would fade the game until I know for sure. If Bridgewater's in, I, I, I start to lean the other way. But if not, then for sure, I, I'm with you on the Vikings there. Uh, uh, I, oh, I don't yeah, know if he's actually, going to be back. Okay, they do. A, never mind. Yeah, you're right. They have one here. They didn't put list him as active yet. But I read a thing that says they do expect him back. Even with Bridgewater back, though, with how the Vikings are playing, and how Kirk Cousins, when he's playing well, is more of a guy that has game-winning drives under his belt, where Bridgewater is more of an athletic game manager, I still would give that to the Vikings. I think they're a better overall team than the Panthers. The I, Panthers I, the kind of- I like the way the, I, I like the way the Panthers fight. So we're, we're different there. I'm taking the Panthers. Either way. Either way. Um, and then we have Arizona and New England. This is another. New England's been better, but they're not, in my opinion, going to be able to keep up with Arizona. Arizona has the best offense in football and still has a league average defense that has been able to make them one of the better teams in the league. They should be able to go to six and or seven and four after this week. They are going to win by more than one and a half. Uh, I don't even know why that spread's so close. I guess it's because it's in New England. Um, and I think that'll be a pretty good game for the Cardinals. They'll be able to win by more than one and a half. I think they're going to get a lot of pressure on the Patriots, who do not have the best O-line this year. So I think they're going to be able to pretty handily win games and so easily cover the seven and, or the one and a half spread for me. And I'm taking the Cardinals. In terms of over under 49, I would lean because of the Cardinals offense and the fact that the Patriots is in the top uh, 17 of the league, too. I'd probably lean over for that than under, but I wouldn't put money on that. I'm more putting money on the fact that the Cardinals are going to win and it's going to be over the one and a half spread. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I agree. I, I like to win. The Cardinals are just are very, yeah, I'm with you on that. It's a pretty easy one, actually. Yeah. Well, if that's easy, this one's easier. Uh, we'll brush right through this game. Take the Dolphins to win by more than seven points. Because of how abysmal the Jets are, it's a question of if this will be over 44 and a half. The, the Dolphins definitely can score enough to get it over 44 and a half. I would probably, just because of how abysmal the Jets are, they, own, they average less than 15 points a game. I probably would still have to lean under for that. I know the uh, Dolphins will score a lot of points, but I'll probably still lean under because of the Jets' abysmal offense. Yeah, the Dolphins could get 35. Yeah, yeah, I'd say the same thing. And, yeah, for sure, take the points, take the Dol- Dolphins take all the day. Spread, yeah, okay, but that? I wouldn't go near the total just because you never know what you're getting from those Jets. And then this game, Baltimore Ravens, uh, we're going to skip over this one, and we wish everyone well in a speedy, healthy recovery that has COVID. There's no line for this game yet because nobody even knows who's fully going to be active, so we just wish everyone well with this one. We'll move on to the first one of the 4 o'clock hour, which is 4.05, New Orleans Saints versus Denver. This shouldn't be too complicated of one either. I like their quarterback. I think he's going to develop uh, Denver's quarterback, Drew Locke, more and more as time goes on. I know my good buddy likes him a lot, too. But uh, they're going to be able to win this game, the Saints, and beat Drew Locke. And they'll go to 9-2 and two after this game. They should cover it by more than a six-point uh, spread. Uh, this game is likely going to be because the – only because the Broncos' offense, um, I don't see getting going enough under, I would think, the 42-and-a-half because I see the Saints – defense which is also top par stopping the broncos and just cementing them to maybe a seven to ten point game even at most so i would say i would see that being under and the saints pretty handily winning this game even with tyson hill at the helm but what do you think of this one i think broncos could cover um the six uh but Uh, I'm not really big on the side here as far as that, unless you're talking about the Saints to win, but you're not getting much on the ML on that. I'm more like what you said to the under 42 here. I like that play. That would be my my play more than anything here. I think it's more likely to be under with Tyson Hill in two than having Drew Brees in, obviously. 
Yeah, obviously, right. That's and that's really why I like the under there, uh, forty-two. Yeah, this is another one that's not too painless, and uh, it might have been a little bit closer, Mark, if Jimmy Garoppolo was playing compared to their backups. But uh, the San Francisco Forty ers against the L.A. Rams. The Rams have, if not the best defense in football, the second best defense in football, and they have a top seven offense in football so yeah good luck with that san francisco you're not gonna win um that's gonna be a loss for san francisco nick mullins is gonna get pressured all day good thing for him he's an athletic kid and is able to run around and protect himself because he's gonna need to on sunday Uh, i think the rams will cover the seven point spread this game i actually think because the 49ers are not a team that don't score anything they actually average about 23 a game I do think this game can potentially go over the 45 because I see the L.A. scoring a lot on San Francisco. And I can see San Francisco getting at least two touchdowns on L.A. just to make, just to actually have their offense score a couple points. Normally they're good for at least a couple touchdowns since they average 23. So I don't see them getting blanked for like a seven-point scoring affair in this one. I see them at least still – getting close to their output. They just won't get to it because they're facing the defense. I think I'm to score two touchdowns. But because of that, the Rams, if they score, say, four change touchdowns, that would still be over. So I think this game, with the Rams' offense, has a chance to go over 45. It'll cover the seven-point spread, and then the money line for the Rams is not really a point of touching it because you're not going to make anything. Yeah, and Goff, his overall game is getting better and better. And in the last couple of games, he's really looked like a top-end quarterback in this league. So, um, yeah, I definitely got to go with the Rams. Definitely got to go with the cover. Total, I think that's all of it. Like, it's very close. It's almost like a coin flip to me, that total. I don't really like the total too much. Um, I don't know about – I don't know if the 49ers can – I think they might get – yeah, you could be right. If you, if you tie me down, I'll take the over for sure. Yeah. Now, this game is very interesting. Uh, the last 4 o'clock, 25 <clears throat> game of the week. Chiefs versus Bucks. Uh, the Chiefs are, even in Tampa, still going to be, in my opinion, too much for the Buccaneers because they have the more dynamic overall team where the Bucks, like they've been talking about on TV this week, have been struggling to air the ball down the field and spread the ball on kind of 10 yards of the play. And that's what Bruce Arians likes to do. And they haven't been able to do as much. You have to spread the ball around and be a little bit more creative to beat the Chiefs. And because Tampa struggled to do so, they're not going to be able, in my opinion, to beat the Chiefs. And I do think the Chiefs will cover that three and a half spread. Since the total so high, because of how good these offenses are. I think there's a chance, though, that this can be under 56 because yeah. there's also two good defenses. So yeah, I, I like I liked the under in this play, too, yeah. Yeah, so I think the I think you assume, or you also <laughs> figure not think that the Chiefs are going to win this game pretty good um, as well because the Chiefs never even lost on the road yet. The Chiefs are 5-0 and on the road, so it's not like that's an issue for them. Yep, um, the Chiefs are just rocking right now. Like, uh, last game against the Raiders might have been their toughest contest possibly this year. I think so, and that's also because the Raiders have built their football team to go up against one other football team, and that is the Kansas City Chiefs because they know if they meet them in the playoffs, they want to have the best chance to beat them and get and be the upset and surprise team to get to the promised land in the AFC. So. Yeah, and they won that. I mean, not handily at all, but I like to say soundly in the sense that they were confident all the way through. I didn't see anybody's head down or thinking uh, that, oh, you know, we're we're in tough here. That it looked like every player, especially Mahomes, was still thinking we're going to win this game all the way through that game. It was really impressive. It's a really impressive team. Um, yeah, and I, I and on the opposite side of things. Uh, the Bucks have shown that they get down on themselves this year, uh, which is really surprising. But 
It's that's what I've seen from this team. And if you do that against the Chiefs, they will eat you alive. They could. This could be really a, another blowout, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know if they'll blow them out, but I do think they're easily cover that three and a half spread. I think. I wouldn't. Pretty- I wouldn't predict the blowout, but I could see it being a blowout because the Buccaneers can get down on themselves, and when they do, it's over. That's it. Yeah. Okay. God. Yeah. That that's. I, w- I wouldn't predict a blowout. Now, our Sunday night football game. Uh, for this week is the five and five Chicago Bears against the seven and three. They just keep on gaining momentum. Green Bay Packers. Uh, that is a game that I think is going to go to the Packers. Uh, I think this game, because the Packers are the only team that score out of them, is likely to be under because it's at forty five and the Packers average about thirty, but the Bears have the worst defense in the or the worst defense, excuse me, the worst offense in the NFL. So I would have to say I would lean under for this one because the Packers are going to do all of the scoring, if not most of it, where the Bears might score at most 10 points in this game because we also got to remember Green Bay has had a good defense the last couple of years too. It hasn't been just the Aaron Rodgers offense show. They've actually had a good defense these last few years. And, Including this season. So, yeah, the Bears have no shot in this game. Uh, I do think they actually will cover the nine point spread also. Yeah. Uh, you think, oh, you think Green Bay will cover the spread? Because the Bears are so abysmal offensively, the only way they're not covering the nine point spread is if they play even better defensively than they have all season. Because they haven't gone against Aaron Rodgers all season. There's a, there's a difference when you're going against the one of the best ever to do it. So that, they're not going to have a chance. They're going up against one of the best ever to do it. He's back in his peak prime. All it took was one year of Matt LaFleur's offense to get it really down and get them cruising. Yeah, the Packers are one of the best teams uh, in the league this year, let alone the NFC. They just took a little bit to really get churning. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to be a close game. I think this game has a chance to be a blowout. Okay, yeah, that's it. Now that you put it that way, um, yeah, I'll take the Packers in the cover. Uh, we, yeah, probably under two. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with you on that one. Yeah. Now, this is a uh, game yet again. Um, I'm going to have to pick against my team. Uh, <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I should uh, say so. <laughs> so... Uh, we have the seven and three Seahawks, uh, one bird going up against the other bird, the uh, six. Or the, excuse me, I wish we were six three of one. The three six and one uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I do think the Seahawks will win this game. In terms of the total, is at a exactly even fifty. The Seahawks have the second best offensive football. The Eagles average around twenty. Um, I would say there's a better chance to lean over on that just because it's not like Seattle has a good defense. They're the worst in the NFL. So I think if the Eagles have a week, they are going to be able to score. It will be this week. The problem is Seattle's also going to torch them down the field. So they're not going to be able to to win the game. I just think the Eagles will be able to put the points up so this game is likely to lean over because it's likely going to be a scoring front. It's just Seattle has too much weapons in the end to be able to have the Eagles sur- surpass them in a game, in my opinion. So that's why I think Seattle will win. It'll be more. It'll be by more than five and a half points. I pretty much can guarantee that. Uh, yeah. And the fi- the fifty. I would say is a question, but I would lean over because Seattle has a putrid defense. This might honestly be Carson Wentz's best week of the season in a losing effort because they do not have anybody on defense anymore. Seattle, they win all because of their offense. Pretty much, yeah. Um, That being said, Seattle's burnt me the last two times I've fed them over. But at 50, you got to get over 50. Well, not just going over for Seattle, though. We're also going over because we think in a losing effort the Eagles are going to score on the worst defense in the league. Like right. If they score 20 yeah. points in a losing effort, that's already 21 points plus if 
whatever Seattle scored to win the game. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, in general, like um, the Seahawks, the last two times I've bet they're over, and the first, I think their first five games were all over, and <laughs> the last two times have not been over the total. But uh, they got to be over 50 with the Eagles here. That's got to be, got to be. They only, don't burn me now. I'll, well, yeah. Amen. Be angry is about all I can say about that. And then, uh, yeah, I, I don't think the Eagles even have a chance in God's green. Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't think so either. No. But um, we, we got we covered all the game to week 12 for you. This has been B-Bow Picks, three picks of the week for Capra Comparison Picks. Go check him out over on YouTube. He does some great stuff. And everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant Also, week. I want to say we're the- completely free right now, right? Yep. We're completely yeah, free on people. Have a great, safe, and pleasant weekend, everybody. Enjoy the football. Peace out.